Greetings and welcome to The Fan Perspective. I'm your host, Nathan Lyle, and this is WNBA Weekly, the show where twice a week, usually on Mondays and Fridays, I will talk about everything that's happened recently in the association and things that I'm looking forward to in the upcoming days. You had a busy weekend of action starting with Friday night where you had plenty to look at. You had the Dream facing off against the Sun, Adrian McCautry and Tiffany Hayes combining for 44 points as Atlanta wins their fifth straight and Connecticut loses their fifth straight. Then you have the New York Liberty for the first time this season. Tina Charles did not get a double-double. Yet surprisingly, in spite of that, you know, New York still managed to show complete dominance as they finally end their losing streak. Then you have the Chicago Sky beating the Mystics for the second time in a row. And possibly the biggest game of the weekend, the, or at least the most surprising one for me, the night is capped off with the Mercury Phoenix going on the road to play the Storm in Seattle. And, well, Jewel Lloyd, she has a career-high 32 points. Brianna Stewart just uh, living up to every expectation. She was one assist shy of her first ever triple-double, and Seattle manages to grab a win. Then on Saturday, you had a couple of games. You had two rookies, Ariel Powers and Mariah Jefferson. They both had a career high in points, but the Lynx and Sparks still managed to have a do dominating victories, both teams staying a perfect 7-0. And then the week finishes off with a big Sunday where a lot of great things happen. You have Angel McCautry and Erica Williams combining for nearly 50 points in the game. But the Mystics had five players in double figures and they managed to go into Atlanta and end the Dream's winning streak. Then you have the Fever versus the Sun. Beyond January returns to the starting lineup, pushing the rookie Tiffany Mitchell to the bench. But that didn't stop her. She had a career-high 21 points, which led all scores for the game. She was one of five Fever in double figures as Indiana finally gets their first road victory of the season. And then the final game of the weekend, you have the Storm versus the Liberty. And Seattle has become a really fun game this season to watch. I mean, they're just, they're an exciting team to look at because you just never know like, how, what's going to happen with them. And Brianna Stewart, she was held in check offensively. And actually, if I'm thinking about it, is this her first game without double figure points? Now, that would be shocking if that was true because I seem to recall her averaging basically 14 right now a game. Yeah, anyways, either way, she, she was held in check offensively, but she did manage to grab a career-high 17 boards, which is the most anyone's had in the WNBA this season. Alicia Clark led the team with 23 points. She was actually perfect from the field, perfect from the three-point line. She didn't miss her first shot until the fourth quarter when she missed one from the free throw line, but still, 7 of 8 isn't half bad. Alicia Clark is one of my favorite players. I feel like she is a very underappreciated person. No one ever seems to talk about her, but she is incredibly talented. Unfortunately for them, the Liberty looks like they've gotten their groove back. Tina Charles, of course, had a big double-double that New York manages to win their second game in a row. So after all that excitement, here are your current standings. So yeah, this season is getting to be fun. You definitely got a clear separation with the powers. For the most part, you've got like the two teams that are completely dominating at the top, Lynx and Sparks still undefeated. And it looks like they might stay that way for a while. And then right below them, you've got the dream. There's a little bit of separation, but the gap's not quite as wide. They do still have those two losses. Then you've got this whole jumbled mess of people in the middle. You have no idea what's going to happen with them. And then at the very bottom, you've got the Stars and Connecticut, who have one win each. And then straddling third place right now, you've got the Mercury, which is definitely surprising. And it feels weird to say this, I think. It is very early in the season and you don't want to count them out completely, but the thing about the Mercury is I'm starting to lose like faith in them because they do have an incredibly talented team. They have so many strong players on this roster. This is a team that on paper looks very capable of winning a championship. But right now, they are just not winning games. Right now, they only seem scary on paper. They only seem dangerous because they have a lot of those big names. 
but it's not equaling wins yet. Like the Stars and the Sun, I can understand that. The Sun, I felt like they could be a playoff team, but like right now, Chunei, she is a shadow of her former self. You know, there are a lot of inconsistency from a lot of these young players. Like, I can get why they're losing, I understand that, but Phoenix, it just makes no damn sense. They should be five and two, not two and five. Either way, this season has been full of just plenty of surprises and it's been really fun to watch. It's been exciting, it's been interesting, if nothing else. It's had a lot of surprising twists and turns. I mean, seriously though, Phoenix is like third from last right now. This, it's, this is kind of like some M. Night Shyamalan bullshit. Nobody saw this coming, no one. We'll move on to this weekend's action, and as always, I will tell you which ones are currently scheduled to broadcast nationally, which means everybody in the U.S. should be able to watch it. And for the rest of them, check your local listings, or, or you can watch every single game on WNBA League Pass. Also, the times that I announce will be Eastern Standard Time, so be sure to adjust for your time zone. So Tuesday is packed full of action. You've got the two undefeated teams both going at it. You've got the Mercury at the Lynx at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on NBA TV. And this game may be slightly more, more hyped than it should be. I don't know. Like I said earlier, the Mercury, they've had a very disappointing season so far. If they somehow do manage to pull off a miracle and go into Minnesota and hand the Lynx their first loss of the season, that would be like the biggest shock of the year right now for me. The, the way that both of these teams have started this year. So, And then you've also got the Liberty at the Sparks at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on ESPN2. And you know, the Sparks, they handled the Liberty fairly well they, the first time they met. They went into the Garden and they were able to defeat them. And so now you're playing in LA. You know, so I basically expect the same outcome. Then on Wednesday, you've got the Mystics at the Wings at 8.30 p.m. And the Mystics, the minute Ivy Ladder came back, they started playing a little better. And recently, they've started grabbing some wins here and there. And I expect the same thing from the Dallas Wings now that Glory Johnson is expected to make her return. She was suspended for the first seven games. The Wings have now played seven games. So as far as I know, she should be back for this one. And then on Thursday, you've got the Stars at the Mercury at 10 p.m. And... Honestly, right now, it's hard to get excited about this game because these are two teams that are just desperately trying to avoid the basement. Because, you know, whoever loses this game is in 11th place. And 11 out of 12 is not a place you want to be. So yeah, that's it for this edition of WNBA Weekly. Tune in on Friday for another all-new episode. And until then, this has been The Fan Perspective. I'm your host, Nathan Lyle, and I hope you have a good week.